Hello! Hey everyone! Happy Tuesday! Thank you for joining me everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time where we relax and we craft, we work on a project together. And uh, thank you replay viewers for watching and thanks YouTube viewers for watching. This will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies when we're done here tonight. So we're taking a week a week off of sewing and we're giving punch needle a try. So here is my punch needle so far. It's it's backwards for you guys, but it's going to ultimately say make it 80% good. You work from the back, so I have the back um, the back is actually reversed, but the camera's reversed here, so it looks looks right for you guys. But we are getting this fuzzy little fun silly texture from doing the punch needle. Uh, happiest punch to be here, Deborah. nice. Uh, so we'll continue on that tonight and probably tomorrow night as well. We'll see how far we get on this. And it's been fun. I started this on Saturday. It's the first time I've ever done punch needle before. And then I picked it up yesterday. So yesterday I talked a little bit about all the little tools and supplies and fabrics and uh, it's just uh, you can check that out the video from last night on YouTube or here on Facebook if you want to just get a little bit more of the how-to. I'm going to dig right into it tonight to see uh, if we can get this a little further. So thanks again for joining me everyone. I appreciate it if you're just coming in. My name's Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish and we're here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central, so thanks for joining me again. Oh, just to let you guys know, I will not be here Thursday and Friday of this week, or, or the weekend, I'm never here on the weekend, but I won't be here on Thursday and Friday. I'll be out of town, and I, I should be here uh, tomorrow, uh, but I might need to pick up my husband, but I think I'll be here tomorrow as well. So tonight and tomorrow, and then we'll come back here again on Monday. So, uh, and I should have my machine, hopefully, too. If not, we might continue on this for another day or so. So, all right, let's turn this around and we'll get going. Thanks for joining me, guys. Okay, back to it. Let's get on in there. So, make it 80% good. Here's what the design will look like. Uh, this is what I use to transfer the design to the back. So again, the make it 80% good. I'm just kind of waiting for it to stop wiggling here again. Uh, but make it 80% good. That's kind of the phrase I like saying, or I like thinking to myself when, uh, um, when perfectionism is starting to get in my way or when, I, when I'm stalled because I just can't start something because I don't know how it's going to start. Um, and, uh, you know, I just want it to be good. And whenever I start thinking like that and it takes time away from working on it, I think, wait, I only need it to, be, I only need to make it 80% good. And uh, when it's only 80% good, then meh, I can just start. It's fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. And same thing for finishing something. Meh, it only has to be 80% good. I could just wrap this up. You know what I mean? So it, it helps me. I think about it all throughout the day whenever I need, like, a, that tish of motivation that's going to put me over the edge <laughs> to get something done. So I'm making a little wall hanging from it in my nice new hoop. This is my Auburn hoop, uh, auburnhoops.co, C-O. Uh, I have a link in here, but they make these cool new hoops that are, that are wood. And then they have this little ring in it that kind of holds, holds the fabric in. But anyway, let's give this a go. So tonight, last night we worked, we did like these poofy loops here, these tall loops, and then these shorter loops next to it. And tonight I want to start with this text down here. I'm going to continue on this good. And uh, that is the plan today. So when we worked, so the loops were on the outside, we worked from the back. And uh, that's the typical way of working on a punch needle is working on the back. So I was just filling in these shapes. So that's why we have all the drawn lines on the back. And then I decided to do the text from the front because I was really liking just this kind of like backstitched look. Um, so I worked from the front to the back for the type. 
um, which is which is typically backwards for punch needle, but it just depends on what look you like. And I thought this was a, a lot more legible with um, with these stitches compared to the little poof. So I had to pull this out a few times um, because you know it started looking like this, and I'm like, man, that's really you can't read that hardly at all. So let's let's reverse it. And that's why, that's what I did here. And it's kind of cool. It, that's like a nice flat texture and it it's contrast to the really fluffy texture of this, what's going to be the 80%. So let's continue down here. Uh, so again, I'm working from the front now. So I had to redraw my text on the front because uh, typically, like I said, you're only drawing on the back. But all right, so I redrew this. I'm going to, I used a little bit more of red, but I'm going to, get into this little area here still and round this out and we're just going to start adding color to this kind of kind of like what we did here where it just kind of I, I end one color and I just start another one up and we go till it's done so here is my needle it's all ready to go from last night we left off on here and I've just left left my remaining gold thread on here there's not much left but I think enough to get us you know a good distance on this good here. So again, we, we threaded it through the tube and then also through the eye of the needle and we should be a-okay. I have it set at the four. Uh, that's, I don't know, what I've been doing for all this text. Um, it doesn't really matter because we don't see the loops, but I thought the four was holding, holding everything in pretty well. So all right, I'm gonna just go to it right away. So I'm just, just gonna start right here. Again, I'm, I'm, you kind of go sideways. This, the needle has an angle to it. The angle, if you can see that, it's like a straw that's been cut, sliced at an angle. There, so the front of it is where that hole slices. And then you have the sides, the sides of the slice. And that's what we're gonna, lead with so like whatever direction we go we're going to lead with either one uh, this side of the slice or that side of the slice and I guess you never want to lead with the back because I think the loops don't stay very well so we're going to lead with the sides again all right we're going to start right here Boop. and uh, got to pull that thread out of the other side there okay I like pulling it in just a hair. All right, now we're just following that line. I'm gonna to try holding it up here. It's not as easy holding it. I like leaning an edge on the table, but we'll do it this way. So I'm lifting it out and just dragging it along the fabric and making a stitch, dragging along the fabric. So I'm making these stitches right up next to these stitches that I did before. I think we're gonna just start by doing this outline of this like middle little circle of the G and we'll just uh, go back and forth then. So again, I'm, I'm kind of moving. It's easier for me to move the whole piece versus, it, versus just moving the needle. Kind of like, uh, Kind of like how I learned in kindergarten to move the paper, not the scissors, when you're cutting something out. It, I mean, you can just turn the needle. Like, if I went like this, let's just turn the needle. So, all right, I'm turning it to go like a stitch this way, and then we're going to come back the other way. I'm going just along those lines again. My last, my last stitch line. So this time I'm just turning the needle in the direction I'm going. And you know what, that's not that hard either. I think it's just a little less discomfort on my wrist to just keep the uh, needle in the same position versus rotating it. But you can kind of see that I'm slightly rotating it as I go. Or you can just rotate the whole piece. <laughs> Whatever feels right. So you can see I'm kind of making almost, not a satin stitch, but like a bunch of long and short stitches. Actually, not even that. It's kind of like I'm just doing a bunch of back stitches next to each other. And I'm just going to go till this little orange is uh, empty. And I'm trying to do it in a way where it looks like one color is just kind of ending and the next one's starting. 
So it looks like I need a little bit more on this part of the G. So we're going to go back in there. So this is uh, the same thing we were doing last night, but I'm just working on the front of the piece instead, which is a little different. All right, this is the last kind of bottom area. All right, we're gonna squeeze one in here. I have a little bit more floss, but not a ton. I think we're gonna rotate. and come down um, this front part of the G, that little tail of the G a little bit, until I run out of thread. And I can see the, the thread just, the last little bit of thread went in the tube there. So we're just going to go down this base, and I think I'm going to start going back up this side a little bit. And I'm just going to keep stabbing this until I run out. And we'll come back and fill in some of these stitches this way again. Oh, and there we go, out of floss. So, uh, yep, there's there's the end of my little floss right there. I'm gonna snip, snip where we started. You know, this is the back, so it doesn't have to look all that pretty, but you know, why not have the back be pretty too? A lot of times you can decide what side you like better and then just choose that to be your front. But see, so now this is, this is the actual little poofs, um, but we're deciding that these are going to go on the front for this one. So there we go. That's our first little part of the G. All right. I think, you know, I, I think we might just continue with the yellow a little bit because I think if we change colors here, the G will look a little funny. So I'm just going to, we'll go like into like maybe the second O with more of the orange since I have a ton of it. Here's some more. And then we'll switch. We'll add some more colors to it still. But all right, let's thread thread this guy again. So I, I need my threader. Here we go. And I gotta put it through the tube from the needle side to the back. There we go. Put in our little piece of thread into the threader and pull it through. There we go. And get it off the threader. And now we need to thread it through the eye of the needle as well. Otherwise it won't work. We learned that yesterday when I forgot to put it through the eye of the needle. It just didn't work at all. All right, through the threader again, and there we go. Double threading, threading through the tube, the straw basically of the needle, and then through the needle itself. All right, let's do it. So again, I'm just gonna kind of continue where I left off, go back and forth to finish this shape, and then we'll start like this O, and then I might just um, start a new color at some point here, if I don't want that whole thing orange. I just have all this dangling behind me here. I don't want any tension on it, because any tension, if I start pulling on it, it's gonna pull out all my stitches. All right, so let's, uh, let's start here. I can go like one, well, let's start at the bottom, make it, because then we can go like one, two, and then three, and then be back up there. All right, pull out that little end. Ooh, and we're kind of stuck in the needle there. Oh, something, my needle came undone in a really odd way. Oh, I think we just got, there we go. Got a little, little end. So the six strand embroidery floss, I mean, if I used a yarn, like a thin yarn or even like a pearl cotton, I think that'd work better because uh, embroidery floss always wants to come apart. I mean, it's meant to come apart. Uh, so you can separate the six strands and it's wanting to come apart on me. And it's, uh, 
messing things up a bit, so ideally a, a yarn would have been better. All right, I'm gonna, oh, I wanted to start at the bottom there too. Well, I'm gonna do that again then. I wanted to start at the bottom so I could go up, down, and then back up. And since this is being silly anyway, let's just do it again. We'll start at the bottom. Pull the end through. All right. Now nah, we'll go up this way. What kind of fabric? Um, so the background I'm using is a jean fabric by Robert Kaufman. So I've read that you actually do not want to use a cotton backing. So like you don't want to use normal quilting weight cotton um, or like a cotton muslin. And the reason that I've read is that it's the this the needle will cut that fabric. So typically I think from what from what I've read uh, what you want to use instead is a fabric that's um, for for a small needle needle um, punch needle like this with embroidery floss, you want to use like a weaver's cotton, which apparently is like fifty percent um, cotton and fifty percent polyester. So I guess it's a little stronger. Um, so so I've read that you could also use like a like a canvas or something. Um, which I think is just like a heftier, a heftier cotton. So I thought the jeans would work. So I, I scrounged through all my fabric because I have just basically quilting weight fabric and I'm like, ooh, what am I gonna use for this? And I found this jean. Um, so the jeans are, it's just strong enough. This is a thin, they're thin jeans. So they're the Robert Kaufman, I believe they're medium weight jeans. I put a link to it. Um, in, in the post here, but it's a heftier fabric, so it's not going to cut like quilting weight cotton, I presume. And uh, um, it's just more durable. It's going to hold all our stitches in because the only thing holding our stitches in is the fabric, right? So the fabric needs to push out of the way so we can make a, a punch and not um, cut itself. So that's the objective here. We're gonna kind of go around the center of this O. So that was kind of a bummer when I read that you can't, that you don't want to use quilting weight cotton. I have heard people use it and it, it was fine, but um, I thought I'd start out with something that was more recommended. And really, yeah, really I'd like to get some of that weaver's cotton. Is that what I just called it? I think that's what what I said that was recommended. And that's that's that part that's like a little has a little polyester in. So if you're doing the really big needle punch like where you're using like bulky yarn and stuff then there's other fabric options but with just doing something little like this I heard, I heard that linen you can use linen as well but I don't know that's that's a mystery to me still I want to figure that out I'd like to test it on quilting weight cotton weaver's cloth yeah that's that there we go Paula that's that's um, right. Oh, Marianne, it's totally relaxing so far. Uh, are, are the links for the needle and the hoop too? Yes, Mary. So I have links for everything in this Facebook post. And if you watched yesterday's replay on YouTube or if, you're, if you watched um, after I get done here, this replay, those will also have the links. So if you scroll down into the post to uh, like product, I think I said products I used, 
then it will it'll list them there. And yeah, so the hoop, the needle, I don't think I put the floss in, but this is just DMC strict six strand embroidery floss. I think that's all I'm gonna do for that O. We'll do a few stitches into this next O, and then I think we'll switch switch colors again. It is relaxing. It, it's fun, and it you know I just really love making, or I, I just love working on a new craft. I'm okay now. I'm now I'm just leaning it on the table here because. I was trying to hold it, hold it up so it was close to the camera, but um, it's it's a little hard on my hand to just stay holding it up. All right, I think we'll maybe just stop there for the O, and yeah, we'll um, we'll start up another color. So I'm going to go to the back again and grab my needle. Oh, you want to make the cool figurines? Yes, that would be so fun. I have lots of linen from napkins. Oh, so um, in theory, so I think, just give it a try, Gretchen. I think the ultimate idea is that you have to use a fabric that's not going to get cut by the needle, and that is, um, that's going to hold your floss. So here, you know, like with the, with how tightly this is, I mean, it's not as tight as, as quilting weight fabric, I don't think. Oops, sorry. I just totally hit you guys. I might um, get a little higher and then zoom in. But when I'm punching, it's moving, it's moving the threads out of the way and then the threads want to go back and that's what hold the loops, what's, what's holding the loop. So, I'd like to test different different um, fabrics, but for my first one, I wanted to you know have a good uh, chance of it working. So that's why I used this is that medium weight jean fabric. You can try the linen. I think if it's too loosely woven, the linen, then it might not stay. And the other thing with napkins, if you're thinking of doing napkins and and leaving them as napkins then uh, I'm not sure this holds up to wear and tear. So it is more for display. So, but you were, you were mentioning that you were gonna make little figurines. So maybe you're just using the fabric of the napkins. That might work. I would give it a try. You were thinking about the hedgehog in the punch needle. Connie, I think that would be so cute. Oh, and Mary, you're wondering about the hedgehog. I, um, I actually kind of want to try that. I want to take one of my designs, like one of the, like the jellyfish or the hedgehog or something, and try it as punch needle because I think you'd be able to just use the embroidery pattern as is. Um, you might want to make it a little bit bigger because, like, like what's happening with this text, you know, it gets a little bit difficult to read a little bit. But um, uh, I don't know. It's worth a try. So maybe. It, Maybe, well, maybe we try one just to size, see what happens. One of the embroidery patterns, like the the hedgehog, or one of the ones that we can fill in completely, like, I don't know, maybe the monkey or something. I don't know. Uh, but then, then um, yeah, I think we should give that a try. We could even try the, well, you know what? I kind of punched it into the muslin a little bit, and I think it was it was cutting the fabric a little bit. So I think, I think you need something that's not going to get cut and that can hold, hold the fabric. And so I don't know, we'll have to test some fabrics, but all right, I, you know, I still have some of this, this orange on here and uh, oh, I just hate the idea of having to rethread it. So before moving on to here, I think I'm just going to add some more orange to this eight. I'm okay with this primarily being orange because that's, that's most of what I have. So, uh, you know, why don't we just make another kind of, why don't we have orange coming off of the center of this eight here and we'll use up what we got here. So I'm going to just start from here and we'll make like another little blob like, like here maybe. So I'll make a shape of the blob and then we'll just fill it in. We'll just go back and forth a little bit. 
I'm always nervous about doing that. Maybe we'll make a smaller blob, go back and forth, and then we can make it bigger. That's what we'll do. All right, so now I'm working from the back again here. So I saw someone do it where they didn't, they didn't um, pull all this thread to the front. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do that here. Although this one's kind of all frayed and it's gonna get in my way. Forget it, we're gonna pull it through to the front again. Oh, did our state not change the clock? Yeah, we changed. We um, we sprung ahead. So, oh, it's 11 p.m. there. Oh, it's uh, it's only it's nine o'clock here. So, uh, Central Time here in Minnesota is is nine o'clock. All right, let's make kind of a blob shape. This time I'll just turn the needle instead of, yeah, it's easier to turn the fabric. I'm just going to keep turning the fabric. And it's easy, easy to support the fabric on the uh, table here too. All right, so we're just gonna go up to like here, but I'm gonna move that guy over. All right, so now I'm just gonna go kind of back and forth here to fill in this shape. Again, we'll just go till uh, till I run out of floss on this guy, and then I think we'll jump back to the the good and work on that some more. So if I just go back and forth, because I'm just leading with that side edge, so I'm leading with one side edge and then leading with the other side edge. That way I don't have to keep rotating, which is nice. So we're just going side to side. And from the front, it's just gonna look like a pile of loops. So the design doesn't have to be all, you know, going exactly, you know, it doesn't have to be like, like this one where we follow the shape. If you don't have that hoop, do you think wrapping the inside ring like you showed us will be tight enough for this? Deborah, I think so. And I might actually test that out because I have another idea for a punch needle project that I like a really itty bitty one. And I kind of want to see if it works. And I'm just going to use, I want to test that. So I'm going to use just the hoop that I wrapped the, the inner hoop for. I suspect that would be enough. At worst, you'll just kind of have to tighten it a little bit every once in a while or pull the fabric taut again every once in a while. But um, I think that should be fine. But yeah, I'd like to give that a try as well. And you know, it all kind of depends on how difficult it is to punch punch your thread through or your needle through. So if it's really difficult to punch the needle through, then uh, I, you know, if I'm just conjecturing, I'm guessing that um, you might be using too tight of a weave for the size needle that you're using. And you determine the size needle by the thread that you're trying to push through. So if you want a big fat piece of yarn, you're going to have a big needle and that's going to be really difficult to punch through, you know, some jeans like this. So you'll need um, a, a bigger weave like a monk's cloth is used a lot or a, a weaver's linen if you're using big yarn. Um, so if it's really hard to punch the needle through, then then I'm thinking your fabric might want to loosen more often. 
How about duck cloth for fabric? I see that a lot at Hobby Lobby. I have no idea, Deborah. That to me that sounds like it might be stitched a little tight. So jeans in theory are tight, but this is a this is a really um, lightweight jean. So this is not like a typical blue jean jean. I think it's it's a little a little lighter, but still much heavier than than um, than quilters weight cotton. I'm just kind of making a shape here until my fabric's out. I filled it in, so then I just jumped to the outside again, and I'm just adding to the shape until it's until it's done. You like the embroidery floss? Look, it's hard to think yarn will look as good. The yarn actually looks really, really pretty, Mary. Uh, especially if you use like a nice wool or something fuzzy and stuff. I think it actually looks really cute. So I would just do some Googling on punch needle and then you can see some that work with yarn. But yeah, your supplies are a little bit different if you're going the yarn route. Um, so different fabric, a, a bigger punch needle. And by bigger, I mean the tube is fatter to allow, the straw part is fatter to allow more thickness of thread to go through. It really is pretty though. That's my next step up. If I decide to like this, like, ooh, maybe I'll do something bigger. All right, I'm, the floss is through the tube, so this is it. When this runs out, then this color is done, or this, uh, this shape is done. And then we'll, we'll check it out. We'll go this way again. Oh, there we go. That's it. So we made this funny shape here. We made it We made it the smaller shape and then zigzagged it in just because I wanted to make sure I had enough. And then I just kept going around the outside till it ran out there. But let's check it out. <laughs> All right, that eight is almost done. Ugh, it's so funny. All right, I'm going to trim those little ends off again. So just right close to the loops. All right, that's one. Let's get this other one. Oop, I think I missed one. There we go. All right, so let's go back to the good down here. Oh, good thing you organize the, I organize the floss. I'm using my scrap floss. So this is all scraps from the kits. They just happen to be the wrong length or, or something was just not right with them. So <laughs> this is an unorganized floss. That's what I'm using up. I'm using up garbage is what I'm using up right now. And I love doing that. Um, okay, why don't we... I'm just trying to pick out other colors that I have besides that gold. We have this kind of orangey color. And we have some white. I want to get this white in in uh, um, the text yet. And then we have more of this red. I don't want to use, I don't want to really use the blues in here because the background's blue and I don't really want to use the black. So we're kind of left with the gold, which is most of it. And you know what? I can always grab some more floss. I have more, more garbage floss laying around too. This piece is a little short, I think. But all right, so we got we got a few other little deals here. I need enough to fill this in, and I still have the percent to do here yet too. Um, but yeah, I think let's let's get rid of some of this like coral pink. Oh, these two are together. Let's separate those first. Okay, we'll do some coral pink, and then maybe maybe all this is coral pink until we run out or get close. I don't, I don't know if we'll run out, but then we can do like a little little white tucked in here. Or maybe, maybe we should do a little bit of the white first. Do this O with white and then the rest. And there's a white right there. I think I'm gonna do the orange first and then, then add the white. You found batting for your chevron quilt. Nice, you've got the warm and natural. Oh cool, Gretchen. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm using too. And I'm excited about that. We'll get there, get there on the quilt. All right, so I'm threading the needle again. So I'm going from the needle side in. I accidentally, when I was working on Saturday, was trying to go from this side to the needle. I'm like, why can't I get it? 
And it's like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to go from the needle. Oh, Glennis. <laughs> Glennis says she's uh, amazed at how quick I can learn a new craft. Well, I did do, I did a lot of, I did some reading on it before I started and did my research a little. I don't know. That is my jam. I love, love, love learning new things. And even if it's just like tiny minutiae, I like learning one little new thing to make, you know, a craft easier or, you know, figure out something that I didn't know before, a little trick or tip. I kind of just love that. And that includes kind of learning, learning new ones from scratch. So, uh, and, and I like um, just figuring things out as I go, like, oh, my arm's a little con uncomfortable right now. Can I adjust in any way to make it a little uh, little more comfortable? So I love just thinking about thinking about it as I go to just uh, to improve as I go, too. So I'm constantly looking for, like, improvement hacks. So I don't know. I love that. All right, um, so we're going to go around this guy just back and forth, back and forth. I can probably go back and forth four times. So like one, two, three, four. I'll start on this side. One, yeah, I don't know. This one, it looks like we did about two or three. So yeah, so I'm going to start here. So we'll punch in. So again, I'm working from the front because um, I want just those flat stitches. This is the atypical way. Again, usually you're working from the back to the front. Pull out that little thread. I don't need all that there. Oh, you're the same way with trying new things, Connie. That's awesome. Oh, Bonnie, you're making all those little chevrons. All right, I'll try holding it again. Ugh, it's just it's just a little easier to um, lean it up against the table, so I'm going to just continue doing that. And I think it'll be a little bit faster. So let's go around the inside of this guy. I can tell that my fabric's a little looser at the bottom here. But it seems to be working just fine still. And we'll just go back and forth a few times. So I'm trying to keep my stitches relatively consistent. That's been getting better as I Keep keep going. And I think for, if I'm just wanting to make the poofs, like the poofs on this side, I don't think I actually need to be this close to each other. You know, I'm, I'm going right next to the line that I just did. I don't think you really need to do that if you just want to see the loops. But since since I'm making these this text and I want it to look all filled in, I'm probably going a little bit closer than than necessary. Oh man, you guys, I don't know anything about baking at all. <laughs> That is, I, I definitely consider that a craft, but it's definitely one that I haven't gotten into. And I think it's because it goes away right away. <laughs> I have a weird thing with that. Um, you know, you spend all that time making something and it's beautiful and then it's just gone. Someone eats it. <laughs> Although I have become more interested in just general cooking lately, but still there's something just a hair less desirable for me. And I think it's because it goes away. I like the permanence of making, uh, doing like a craft uh, like this, where you're making something that exists indefinitely in theory. Actually, I don't do very well with sugar and uh, grains and stuff now anyway, so baking would probably be not smart for me. Right, I'm going to go along the outline here and we'll kind of fill it in in the middle.
one little stitch up there, and we'll come back around. We'll go right in the middle here. Oh, you're trying to make better Christmas cookies? Cookie de decorations? Ah, oh, dang. So yummy. I'm trying not to eat all that anymore, but holy cow, when it's in front of me, I have a hard time, um, hard time not eating it. All right, I just have a little bit left, so we're just going to continue with uh, this orange until it runs out. And then I think we'll do a little bit of that white until the white runs out, and then, I don't know, maybe more of the gold, just because we have it. Let's go back up. There's my end hanging out there. And I could probably get a little bit faster here too. I'm kind of at a little awkward position. Let's try and go back up this way a little bit. Almost out of floss. Oh, there we go. That was the last, last little bit. Here we go. Looking cute. But yeah, it's a little, need to pull it a little tighter down here. I mean, we've been punching at this thing, so it's going to get a little bit loose. But all right, let's uh, work on this D a little bit. Let's put the white in now, I think. That'll be pretty. Um, all right, so I need to thread it all again. I'm trying to avoid this threading. This threading just seems like takes a while, and I just want to get punching. So uh, that's why I've been just kind of keeping this whatever color that I have on, on and finding a different place for it before having to re-thread just because it's annoying. It's not annoying, I just want to keep punching. My mom did a bunch of um, cake decorating classes and stuff when we were when we were little and so we had some awesome cakes growing up for sure. Decorated all awesome with frosting like the whole thing with like little stars and roses and all that okay d so let's um how should we do this i think we'll go I'm not sure. I want to try and get like the whole look of it going around with the stitches. So I think I'm just going to go back and forth and fill in this area and then we'll come around here. So um, like one, two, three, I think that's what we'll do. So I'm planning a little bit as I go here. Pulling it, pulling that thread out. There we go. Oh, I didn't trim the thread from last time, but that's okay. It's on the back. Ooh, I'm holding it kind of weird. All right, yeah, let's go up one side of this. Actually, I don't think we'll have that much of this white, so I'm just going to go back down right away. Make sure I get in these spaces with the white. And then we'll go back up.
and we'll just kind of keep adding stitches to this. I was gonna say L, but it's a D. <laughs> it's the L part of the D. going on this outer edge now. We'll trace around the outside and I want to come back and fill in a little bit. Do you have to hold the beginning thread with your left hand? Oh no, I'm just, um, do you have to hold the beginning thread with your left hand at the start of each color? No, you don't. So you just start poking. The fabric is holding in your thread just like how it's holding in the loops. But again, I can just pull out all of these loops. So you gotta be kind of a little delicate, but no, I'm not, I'm not holding anything with my left hand. All I'm doing is holding the, um, holding the hoop. So it's different than how I treat embroidery. Like embroidery, my left hand is very active. I'm, I'm touching all the stitches as I put the needle through and everything. I'm not doing that at all with this punch needle. I'm just um, just punching and I'm trusting I'm trusting that the fabric is holding in my loops. So it is it is pretty delicate because it can just go away from those uh oop, that was it. I'm gonna pull that last one through, I think. Where is that one? It just put a little fuzz on this side. I'm going to try and tuck it into the other side. There we go. All right. That color is done. And I think I, I think I will trim this this time just to make sure things are out of the way. So I'm not pulling at all because if I pull on this, it's all gonna come out. So I'm just barely touching these threads and then, then snipping. I don't want I don't want to pull on any of this. Okay, uh, we have a little more time. I want to I want to try and get this D done. So let's. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna use more gold. I have it and I have a lot of it. Uh, and I have a little bit of red in here already. So yeah, gold it is. So let's thread this again. Then if I have some of this gold left over, I might start putting it in this percent sign. So we'll use, we'll use this gold up yet tonight. And then we'll work on this again tomorrow. And, and we might, uh, I don't think we'll quite finish tomorrow, but we'll get pretty dang close. Um, so maybe when we get back, if I don't, especially if I don't have my sewing machine yet, we'll just finish this up because I don't think it's going to take, take long. And I want to, you know, I want to cut the fabric and, and finish that up a little bit too. All right, now we're just going to go back and forth. Yes, so the threader did come with the punch needle. So when, you, when you're looking at a punch needle, make sure it says that the threader comes with it. This actually had, had two threaders. You should know, you know you should at least use a little bit from our huge cone of floss. Yeah, that, that would be fun. I was thinking about that. <laughs> But I wanted to use up all the the scraps for this one, but definitely the I was thinking about that. I need to just do like a big punch needle that's like only like two colors or something and uh, do that. I did not buy a kit, but I bought um, the punch needle came with instructions and it came with the needle and 
the one that I got and the one that I listed in uh, the link. It's by Prairie Moon Primitives on Etsy is where I bought it from. And the one that I got comes with a few different sizes. Oopsie, now I pulled it out. Because I'm having tension on here, yeah, it's caught on my shirt. So that's the thing, no tension, otherwise it pops out. I think I'm actually having thread problems again because it's six strand embroidery floss. Nope, I need it tight against there. All the threads want to keep undoing. There we go. But yeah, so I did not come, I did not, um, it did not come with like the fabric or hoop or anything like that, like a kit maybe would. There are people that do sell punch needle kits. I follow a few people on Etsy. I should, or not on Etsy, on, on Instagram. I'll try and remember to put a few of them as links. Oh, this punch needle is sold out. Okay, so I have been looking for this punch needle in a few places. Um... And it's actually kind of hard to find. Okay, this is coming out again. But if you wanted to do a search for it, it's uh, it's this Ultra Punch, the Precision Adjustable Needle. But just look for Ultra Punch, and it's got this weird psychedelic background with the this peacock on it. Um, if you do a search for that, more will come up. So I'll I'll try and find some more and see if I can adjust just that. Uh, listing yeah but I've been having a hard time actually finding them so um, I think it, it's just becoming more popular and I don't know uh, in theory any punch needle adjustable punch needle will probably work I'm gonna go around the outside and we'll come back and fill it in. I'm just jumping over these other stitches, which I don't think is maybe a good idea, but I'm doing it anyway. Oh, oh yep, probably made in the USA, it says. That's good. These hoops, these Auburn hoops are made in the USA too. By a, a designer. All right, so I'm just filling in my shape now. If I run out of floss, I'll just put more gold on since I have a lot of this gold. Jump over those stitches again. Man, it's not wanting to play as nice up here, so hopefully it doesn't look too bad. Almost done filling this in. Oh yeah, these hoops are gorgeous, aren't they, Deborah? Um, I, I've been eyeballing them for a while, but then I heard one of the punch needle people that I follow on Instagram say that they work really well for punch needle because it holds the thread or it holds the fabric really really taut and it does they're kind of crazy um, and uh, so that put me over the edge I'm like okay I'm getting it I'm gonna test it out I think just two more little punches and then this guy will be done all right let's cut the thread I'm almost done here with the um, with that yellow. I don't think I'll be able to use any more of the yellow on here. There we go, just a little. Oh, that, that was all that was left. Okay, so there is my good. Yay, I like it. So we have make it and then some crazy shapes and good so far. Let's just trim this up. Yeah, I was having a little trouble. I think my my needle was tangling in the, the white areas that I already stitched, so 
Um, that's I was having a little trouble at that one area. Oop, I didn't I didn't trim this over here. Let's do that. Again, I don't want to pull at it because it'll pull out all the stitches. Walmart has these. Oh, the Walmart site. Yeah, Walmart. Uh, the online Walmart and actually the online places of a lot of places have stuff that you can't find in in the stores. So yeah, um, go check them out there. Yeah, that's like half the price too. All right, so let's see. Well, I think I think that's probably all we'll do tonight since we happen to finish uh, that good, and that's a good starting stopping point. And we finished the floss too, so I'm just gonna close up my needle so this isn't hanging out. So I'm just gonna like adjust the size and have it all the way down, and there we go. Now it's protected, and I won't stab myself. But there we go. There's the good change in colors. I think that's awfully cute. You can read it, right? Good. I think you can read it. And then we also we filled in some of this 80 as well. So tomorrow. I mean, we're done. We're done working from the front. So we won't be working from the front to the back anymore. We'll be working only from the back to the to the front, like how it's typically done. So we'll have to, I might need to snag some more colors because I just really have some of that gold left. So um, I do have more scraps. I do have more scraps hanging around. So I won't be working quite on my cones yet. But yeah, so we'll finish the eight. Let's try and finish the 80 for sure tomorrow. Um, Maybe we can get a little faster. I don't know. But yeah, so we just have the little percent sign. Need to finish that little globular there and this little maze globular <laughs> there. Uh, but then we will be just about done with our make it 80% good. And again, if you're just coming in and wondering what the heck is my 80, make it 80% good, that's the phrase I say to myself all the time when... I'm getting stuck on something or if I'm feeling like perfectionism um, sneak in, then uh, I just start thinking, you know what? It only has to be 80% good. And when it doesn't have to be perfect, when you're not going for 100% and you're going only for 80%, then it's like, man, yeah, I can get this done. I, it's just 80%. I can do, I'll just put an 80% of my energy into it, 80% of my time. And um, then it makes it easier. It doesn't put as much stress on you. So uh, whenever I'm getting stuck, I, I keep saying to myself, I only need to make it 80% good. So this is going to be my little reminder for that. But there we go. So thanks again, guys, for joining me. I'll flip you guys around. Hello again. So thank you for joining me. I'm trying not to have the camera wiggle. It has a little wiggle to it. It is nice because I can bring the camera way into the sewing machine and what we're working on now a little bit better, but there is just a hair of a wiggle. So I'm just trying to figure that out yet. But here we go. <laughs> it's crazy. It's going to look so weird up on the wall. It's going to be like, what's that blob of crazy? But, you know, I think it's legible enough. I mean, right now you're seeing it flipped, but uh, I like it. I'm excited for it. So yeah, so let's finish that 80, at least the 8. Let's try and finish this up. Um, if we don't finish it tomorrow, then we'll finish it on Monday when I get back into town here. And then I want to do that cute way of finishing a hoop where, where you trim around the edge and you uh, do a little running stitch to pull it all tight. And uh, then we'll be done for real. I'm going to leave it in the hoop just like this because the hoop's so pretty. This Auburn hoop, auburnhoop.co. I did put a link for that as well. And they're they're um, not as expensive as what I was expecting them to be either. So check those out. Oh, the audience doesn't see the wiggle. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you might see the wiggle because I think Facebook might autocorrect the wiggle a little bit, the Facebook Live. But uh, on, on uh, YouTube, you're actually seeing what I see on the screen. So um, it might be a little bit wiggly then. Oh, yeah, this would be a great for a car trip, I think. And again, I'm just using up my scrap floss, and that feels good. <laughs> using up the stuffs. So awesome. I will uh, get this up online at Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. And again, it'll be here on Facebook as well if you want to watch it here. I think it's sometimes easier to watch on YouTube. Uh, so that, again, is Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. 
uh, you can do a search for that and it should pop up. Uh, but thanks guys, I will uh, we'll work on this a little bit more and soon we'll get back to sewing the Charming Chevron's uh, quilt top. We're getting close to finishing that. So thanks again and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.